campus today. But when that city was created, it, it hurt us to the tune of uh, my CFO says about $18 million a year. One of the city councilmen from Dunwoody uh, argued with me about that. And he's a friend. I'm not picking on him. He's a friend. He argued with me. He says it's not $18 million. It's more like $10 million. I think 10 is way lower than it is, but $10 million is a lot of money. And they voted him out of office. I mean, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just being honest with you. So um, it, it is a significant economic impact because as we're creating commercial corridors, by making uh, uh, investments and inducements and offering incentives, then cities are either annexing those areas, existing cities, or new cities are being created to draw in those commercial areas to subsidize, to say to the residents, because only the residents get to vote, to say that we can keep your taxes lower, and this is how we gu we'll guarantee it. Okay. So uh, it's something we need to work against. Yes, sir. You can go down a you can go down a perfect highway like Columbia Drive, like a certain area like from Glenwood over to twenty was like at one particular time perfect. Construction company come in, they put in underground pipes, uh, underground you go over to them cut it. Comes from time to time. Um, for that, it's best to call transportation. They're on the website too. They they are the ones that issue all the permits. So if you see activity and wonder if they got a permit or not, transportation should know. Now, once it's an old cut, it is roads and drainage whose inspector would go back and say, okay, is this deteriorated enough? And transportation no longer has an active permit from that company. We got to do it ourselves. Yeah, but I think the answer is that we, sh we can, particularly as we're moving forward with these projects, put up, you know, if you have a problem, this is who you contact. Yeah, what we try to do on the website is we go in every now and then and try to refine it. Uh, hopefully, you've seen it as much better, much more user friendly than it was two or three years ago. But uh, what we try to do is we have a series of frequently asked questions or frequently, you know, frequent contacts. So you can go in there and find a number fast if you have a problem. Um, but uh, we'll continue to look at how we can go about doing that. Okay, so thank you. Uh, Joe, I gotta get you after I get everybody else because I called on you, but okay. So I'll do my best if, unless somebody else, unless nobody else has a question yet. I'll call, yes ma'am. Yes. Um, back on the animal control issue, I'm, I'm very encouraged um, with the interest that you are making and the uh, county commissioners are making. I do think it's extremely important to have metrics in place so that um, the people who care can see that progress is being made. I also think it's important to, to realize that this effort is not just for the animals of DeKalb County. I mean, you have pet guardians in DeKalb County who have lost their homes, they've lost their jobs, their incomes, they've lost their dignity, and they've lost, you know, many of them have to give up pets that they absolutely love. And even if you're not a huge animal lover, perhaps you should think about it on, on behalf of the people who have pets and have to turn them in, I mean, we know owner surrenders are up terrifically, you know, terribly now at that, at that shelter. And also, um, Georgia doesn't, well, the South doesn't have a great reputation when it comes to animal welfare. And Georgia, especially the Atlanta area, has chosen to shine in many, many areas. And I think it would be a wonderful, wonderful thing for DeKalb County to be the shining beacon for animal advocacy in the midst of all this other crap that's going on. So, you know, hopefully we'll 
we'll get there and we'll be a shining beacon for yeah, the Yeah, I, I appreciate your comments. Um, uh, know that um, as we are looking at the report, the best practices in the model towns and cities and counties that we we're, that that are being highlighted in that report, you're right, aren't the one aren't ones in Georgia, uh, but it does give us an opportunity. And uh, one of the things I've said is that DeKalb County has often risen to the task. Uh, and uh, when it came to supporting Grady, we stepped up. When it came to support Martyr, uh, our taxpayers stepped up. Uh, when it came to creating the most uh, modern form of county government in the state of Georgia, once again, our citizens stepped up. So there's no reason that we can't continue to step up and take on some of uh, the challenging problems of, of this day and time. And, and I have no doubt that we will. Uh, just know that uh, there's a cost. And when I say there's a cost, I say that to us all collectively. I think it's these are things that we should do, whether we're talking about animal services or code compliance or building quality libraries or transportation improvements, uh, there's a certain level of sacrifice that every generation is called to make. And for those of us who are here today, uh, we are living, I think for maybe all of us here today, we're living through the most difficult economic times that we've seen in our lifetimes, okay? And, um, and so that makes the cost that much more difficult uh, to, uh, to bear at times. Uh, but every generation is called to make sacrifices at certain times for the next generation. And this just happens to be uh, one of those times when, when that's what we're being called to do. So when we step up and say, we've got to do this or we've got to do that, uh, it's not because we're not sensitive to the sufferings that people are living through right now. It's that we, there's a recognition that these are uh, new and different times. And I mean that in the sense that um, uh, 25 years ago, an urban county like DeKalb County would have been eligible for so much funding. Uh, for example, community development block grants, which Chris is an expert on. Um, that's being cut by Democratic and Republican administrations, not even a partisan issue. Uh, so these are things that are saying to those of us who live in local communities where the services are being delivered that sometimes we're having to ask ourselves what more are we willing to give in order to see the kind of community we want to live in. So thank you very much for your comments. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hi. Um, as CEO, you mentioned before, we all want a quality life and a clean environment. That's why I recycle. And then I try to convince my friends and the people to recycle. And what happened is lately, I heard, uh, I don't know, is it a rumor? It said that the county's recycling program, recycling program is just make the county looks good. And the recycling, uh, the, I'm sorry, you said the rumor was that? The, the rumor is that the county collects the recyclable items and then put it into the landfill and makes the county look good. And no. I, I, it's not particularly t uh, talking about DeKalb County. It just said that some county. So um, how can I uh, find out where uh, all those recyclable yeah. items go after uh, DeKalb County come and collect all those items. Well, I can't speak for other counties, but you can come down to our transfer station, and uh, I think we have citizen tours. Is, is that right? I, I, I've been down there, and you can look from behind the glass, and you can mm -hmm. see where all the recyclables go. And um, S and P. So, so who should she see if she wants to uh, do? Okay, Ted, come see Ted Reinhardt. He oh, can, okay. And you can come look at it for yourself. Okay, good, yeah. good. Because and my friends sometimes ask me, do you know where the items go? I say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to make sure you, I do the, uh, the thing that is valuable. You one, know what one, I mean? One mm -hmm. of the, uh, the uh -huh. interesting vantage points of being in county government, mm -hmm. for those of us who work in county government, is we see where things go. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes things you don't want to 
think about the, <laughs> the dead bodies, yeah. the, uh, the, the uh -huh. garbage, mm -hmm. uh, when stuff gets flushed, all of that is handled by county yeah. government, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, I know where your recyclables go. Uh, good, good. I've mm -hmm. had an opportunity to look at most of these things. Mm -hmm. I've stayed away from the dead bodies, okay? <laughs> Uh, okay. But um, mm -hmm. but uh, we we can accommodate you, and you can see that. Okay. And and, and we're expanding mm -hmm. our recycling efforts. I mean, only about 20% of the county recycles, mm -hmm. and so we're going to be improving uh, uh, recycling education Good. to make more citizens aware. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we hope to move more citizens towards recycling, uh -huh. and then to reduce our trash pickup Good. as we yeah. increase our recycling right. efforts. Okay. Good. Thank All right, you. so thank you very much. I, I, I got to get everybody who hasn't had a question, and then I'll go get the rest of you all in round two, and we got about nine minutes. So let me just see, before I go to people who've already asked questions, is there anybody else? All right, Joe, you get the next one on round two, and then, okay. and then I'll go to, to her. Since Dunwood has become a, has become a city, uh, I knew that uh, probably that Brook, Brookhaven probably would, and also uh, I found out that, Deca that Decatur, downtown Decatur, the city of Decatur, and uh, Avondale is talking about annex and some of the commercial properties uh, in and Shamley in undercover DeKalb County. Now uh, I also heard that uh, Billy Mitchell uh, introduced legislation to. Uh, for the for the cab county to become a city of the cab, uh, cab right now, what do you think about that? Uh, well, you know, sometimes you got to play defense, and sometimes the best defense is a good offense. Um, th th there's certainly some merit to that. Not only does that stop all this, uh, you know, cherry picking of commercial areas, but uh, we did a study about uh, I think it was around 2006 before I became CEO. So about six years ago that showed at that time the county would be eligible for about $30 million per year additional revenue through what we call fran utility franchise fees. Um, and so we've got to see how much that still holds. But you know, the real issue is the policy. You know, the policy is bad. And so, I mean, you know, that, that's, um, you know, sometimes you got to do it from, the, you know, you got to do a roundabout in order to get there. But Sometimes it takes just leadership. I applaud Representative Mitchell and what he's done. But we also need a different kind of a leadership at the state level that says, number one, we need to everybody stop creating these cities that are destroying counties. And it's not about when, it, when they destroy the county, it's not this entity that's being destroyed. They're destroying people and neighborhoods and quality of life because that's what counties deliver, quality of life to all citizens, you see. And so, we need better policy. And, and I, you know, I, I think that's really where it begins and where it ends. If we had better policy, then we wouldn't have to go do, do the uh, go around in order to get uh, to where we want to be. And, and, and that, that's what we need. And we, and we need that. We also need the type of leadership that doesn't allow one representative to bypass the local delegation. See, the traditional rules are that. If you're going to do something that just impacts one county, and a lot of this legislation is being drafted, not a way that it impacts all, um, how many counties is it? Uh, 159 counties, but it's just being, it's being crafted in a way that it impacts just DeKalb County by one legislator who's here in DeKalb County. And so what he's doing is he's bypassing the local delegation, the delegation of those representatives that represent DeKalb County, because they would vote it down, and he, he would lose out. And so what's happening is that the leadership in the state house is allowing him to go around and go to the full assembly, which says, okay, if that's what he wants for his county, then we'll vote for it. And so we need better rules, better policy, bottom line. I applaud. So you're asking me if I like Billy Mitchell's legislation. Yeah, I like it, but it's not the best fix. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. The recycling, I actually went down to SP Recycling a few years ago and I witnessed what happened. I could see all the blue bags. <laughs> so the county stuff is going down there. Uh, there. There are things to keep you up at night, but I don't want that to keep you up at night. Okay, all right. Yes, uh, uh, you're around. 
Well, well let, let me get her and then I'll come to you going. Yes. At least the last three commissioners meetings I have been to, there have been parents talking about and complaining about the fact that this. Excuse me, Henry, why don't you start bringing that over this way? Okay, thanks. I'm sorry. The, um, the school board is letting cell phone companies put towers on school property. The fact that this has been brought up for at least three meetings. Excuse in me, a row, one second. He, he needs it right here. He's, going, he's next. Okay. Kind of tells me that the commissioners aren't really doing anything about this. Is there anything that your office can do as far as influencing the school board to address this problem and stop it from happening? His parents are really upset about yeah, it. Yeah, m maybe. Uh, first of all, you're right. Uh, this falls under the jurisdiction of the school system, and the school system is a separate entity from the county government. Uh, the county government has a CEO and then there's a board of commissioners whose job is to set policy. CEO runs the day-to-day -day operations of county government. And then you've got a school system that has an appointed superintendent who's hired by an elected board of education. Uh, but we have good relationships. As you know, as CEO, um, I've got a voice. And, uh, and I've got strong relationships, as I mentioned earlier tonight, with the chair of the school board, Dr. Walker, and with the vice chair of the school board, uh, Tom Bowen, and with several members of the school board, as well as the superintendent. Uh, we, we work together in many capacities, and we've talked about this issue. Uh, it does fall in their jurisdiction, uh, but I do let them know. I invite them to my town hall meetings. They've come to several. They can't make it to all. Sometimes they have conflicts, but they've come to several of the town hall meetings so that they can hear the issues that we hear. We know that school issues are important to the people that we serve. Uh, I was stopped in Toys R Us uh, last summer. I was going in to get some for my kids, and, and uh, somebody said to me, he said, Mr. Ellis, you got a tough job. And I said, yeah, you know, but there's no easy jobs. It's a tough economy right now. And, and the guy says, yeah, but, you know, with all you've got to handle, you've got to deal with that school system too. And I started to explain to him that, you know, well, no, that is not one of my responsibilities to run the school system. But then I said, you know, he's kind of right. I do have a responsibility. So I'll continue to raise that with the school system. Um, there may be some things that we can do on the permitting side. Uh, Gary Cornell, who's director of planning and sustainability, is here tonight. And he's going to brief me. He has not yet briefed me, but he's told me that there may be some things that we can do on the permitting side at the county level. But the, the, I'm sure there's some risk entailed in that. So he's going to give me a briefing before I tell you what we can do on that end. But um, the influence that you have in being CEO sometimes is, is widespread. And so the ability to reach out to talk to other elected officials who you work with in a variety of different capacities is sometimes the best thing you can do. And to convince them that there's a real concern out there and to talk to them about the issue. The issue for them is they get revenue from the cell phone towers, as you know. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. I'm putting on my other hat as a parent of uh, DeKalb County um, children. So our school, um, where my children go to school, was also on the list for a cell phone tower to be built. And um, I didn't realize when the Friday photo came home that they were having a meeting like that afternoon. Well, it was my fault because I didn't check the folder, so I missed the meeting. But once I found that they were putting um, a uh, cell phone tower, they were thinking of putting a cell phone tower on school grounds immediately. I think as parents, it's not just to sit around and complain about, you know, that we don't like the idea of having a cell phone tower in our school. We have to get up and do something. So for our community, what we did was we did a community organizing and we went door to door every weekend that the next few weeks. We mobilized all the parents in the community and we signed a petition. And after that, we went and brought the petitions that we signed um, before the school board. And we told them why we were against it. And so we did this week after week at the school board meeting. We got more petitions. So in the end, our school was taken off the list. So it's really about civic engagement. If you want something to be done, you have to mobilize your community to go out there and make some noise and you know speak up for what you believe in. And, and, and I'll just say, thank you, Ling Ling, and, and, and civic engagement works really well in an election year. So this is an election year, okay. Um, 
I know I was going to call on Gordon, and was there one more hand I saw up, and then we're going to have to end. So, Gordon, you're going to get the last question then. Okay. I went to a conference, and they had people from Massachusetts there. And they basically said their, their counties don't have any unincorporated territory. All the county is in cities. So the city governments do their thing, and the county government does this thing over all of the cities. And I thought that was very, very interesting. And of course, uh, one and, of the- and, and by the way, that can work as long as revenue is shared in an appropriate way. Mm -hmm. But when the state legislature, because all, a, a county is a subdivision of the state, and, and a city is, is a creature of, of state law as well. And so we can only operate under the constraints that are given to us by state government. And when the state government creates an unequitable revenue sharing model, then you have competing forces. I would assume that's not the issue there. In, in the state of Virginia, you have cities, um, Oh, you know, I might have misspoken. I said everybody lives in a county. I think in the state of Virginia is the, the one exception. I think people live in a city or a county in the state of Virginia. But it, 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 is, it, you're from Virginia? Okay, what part of Virginia? Richmond? All right, so I stand corrected. You know, do you know Mayor um, Jones? I know more about Virginia than you know. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, so that, that, that might be the one exception about everybody living in the county. Yeah, because you're from Virginia. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Hmm? Oh, man. Okay, you, you're my chief of staff. You're making me look bad. <laughs> okay, yes, Gordon. Now, in California, San Francisco is city and county. And yeah, here in yeah, yeah, it's a consolidated city county, yeah. and we have some here in Georgia as well. And uh, like uh, uh, Athens, uh, Athens, Clark County, and such. And one other is being worked on right now, Macon Bibb County, and they're trying to get an agreement between Macon Bibb County and another little city in Bibb County, and it will be the consolidated government for Macon Bibb County. Now, my question is, uh, I talked to uh, one of the women uh, that is in charge of acquisition for uh, parkland and such, and she said that you're uh, acquiring land along the South River, and I was wondering if you know how that is coming. Yeah, um, that, that's Susan Hood. I'm going to let you talk. You, you probably know some about that. I'm going to let you talk to Ted about that because it's time for us to leave, and I see some people leaving. And so I promised I was going to end on time, but he could give you the specifics of that acquisition. You might know we've acquired through our parks bond referendum uh, land, uh, choice uh, land for green space acquisition, and uh, some of the land along the South River is some that we've targeted. Uh, I just want to thank you all for being engaged and involved in your county government. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for uh, being aware of the issues that lie ahead. Uh, thank you for uh, holding us accountable and uh, helping us to monitor the progress we're making. And uh, remember, uh, we've got some important elections, but don't wait till November. If you're not registered to vote, you have an opportunity. Is it too, you packed up? Okay, all right. You have an opportunity to register tonight so that you can vote in the July 31st election on the transportation referendum and all the local county elections. It's going to be a very important time to make decisions about how we will be governed into the future. Thank you all for being here tonight. And I'll be around, I'll be around for a few minutes to answer any questions, and so will members of our staff. Yes, Chris? Mr. C., I just want everybody to know that the the Pan-Asian Community Center is one of our major partners here in DeKalb County. So after we leave, before you leave, if you have, don't have, know